In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the cell shader action. So the first thing we want to do is jump inside Photoshop and open up a photo to work with. So I will just, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the action across two different photos, just to give you a real feel for what you can do uh, with the settings after the action's finished. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this guy. Now it's important that you leave the layer uh, just how it is, background. And you want to make sure that you are set up in RGB color mode because the action won't work in grayscale or CMYK. So make sure you've got those settings right before you begin. Okay, next you want the actions panel window up and open. So if you go to the window menu, select actions, it'll, it'll appear here to the right. Uh, next we want to load up our action. So click on the top right hand corner icon. Scroll down to load actions and select the, the cell shader action. It appears here and twirl open the folder and there's the action all ready to go. So once you've done that, just select the action and click play. And it will take about 30 seconds to build a look. Okay, so the action's all finished, so let's now jump into our layer panel and have a look at what the action's created for us. So we'll just minimize these folders. So it's created two folders, adjustments and the cell shader folder. So let's start off, let's go into the adjustments folder. Now you want, inside this folder, are basically some adjustment layers to uh, really just fine tune your overall look. Um, so when you've got something that you're happy with, you can jump inside the adjustments folder and tick on some of these layers and adjust them to fine tune your look. So at the top here we have our color options folder. Inside uh, there's 11 different color options. You can just switch on the eye for these uh, to see how it affects your photo. Uh, you can turn on multiple ones to um, combine the colors. I'll turn these off. Uh, layer below is vignette. So you can turn that on. Uh, just creates a subtle black shadow around the borders of your design. Contrast, turn that one on, just adds a little bit more contrast. By default, it's set to 50%. You can drag this up and down. Okay, so layer below, solid color overlay. This will fill your entire design a solid color. So you can just click on that colored box and adjust the colors here. Layer below, saturation. Now, by default, the saturation uh, after the action's finished is quite high. You can see it's a plus 55. So if you bring it back to zero, uh, that's the original colors of your photo. But I noticed while I was building this action that nearly every photo that I used it on, the saturation looked, uh, sorry, the design looked a lot better with the saturation up higher. So we'll just leave it around here. Okay, so next, let's go inside the cell shader folder. Now if I just turn this folder off, and on, you can see that this is the folder that uh, creates a look, and you can clearly see the before and after effect there. Okay, so let's take a look what we have here. Original color overlay, if you want to overlay the original colors of your photo on top of this, leave this layer on. If you turn it off, it will sort of, it'll give you some unnatural looking colors. So this will really, um, it's a real case by case situation with this layer. So some photos it'll look better with it with it on, others with it off. So whatever photo you're working on, just quickly turn that one on and off and see which one looks better. Okay, so folder below, edge details, if I turn this one off, you can see clearly what that folder does. Defines all the edges uh, of elements inside your photo. So let's go inside this folder and see what we got. So there's three layers that build up uh, the edge details. So if you turn these off, go off, go up one by one. So edge detail three, two, and one. So if you don't want all three, you can just turn on one 
uh, really depends on your photo. Um, some will look good with just one, others with more. Now, on this folder, I've created a layer mask. And you're wondering probably why I've done that. It's because with some photos, if they're quite black, uh, you'll notice that it, it creates quite a few dots. Like if you're seeing the skull's eyes here, uh, it's because it's trying to detail the edges uh, around fine details. See all those dots there? So what we can do with this mask, if I just fill this mask black, it's removed all the edge details. So it's masked them all out. So if I grab a white brush and I brush into this mask, you see I'm bringing back more of the, the edge details. But, but what I want to do here, I don't want all those details inside the eye. I just want to brush them in in certain areas. So I'm going to start off around his nose. <coughs> A little bit, oh, little bit up here, around his mouth, uh, around the edges of the skull, and if you want to uh, erase some of it, you just switch it to a to a black brush. Okay, so you can see in the mask there all the areas that I've uh, that I want brushed out. So if I just turn the folder on and off now, much better. So if I hide the mask, you can see all the areas that I've erased. Okay, so moving down the list here, we have contour highlights. So what I might do, I'll just turn these layers off and we'll start from the bottom. So here's our original photo. So base design, so everything is basically built and stacked on top of this layer here. So we have contour shadow, which is similar to edge, uh, to the edge details. Then we have contour highlight three, two, and one. Now these are just subtle white lines that run around certain contours of elements in your photo, so it'll just help define areas. Okay, so let's turn this one back on. And let's, we'll leave the original color off, I think, for this one. Let's jump inside the adjustments folder and we'll add some color. That one on. Something like that. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I might just add a bit, see what it looks like with a bit of contrast. And a little bit more saturation. Might just brush out some of these uh, edge details around his nose. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, so let's just collapse these folders and we'll turn them off and on and compare that against the original. So after the action's finished, just make sure to jump inside the cell shader folder and play around with some of these layers because you can really really get some unique looks. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up a new photo. Go this one. And again, just click play on the action. So that's all finished. And let's just collapse these folders and take a look what we can fix up here. So there's a couple of things I'm noticing. In the darker areas of the design, there's a few artifacts up the top here. Now I think that's going to be caused from the increased saturation. So I'll go inside the adjustments folder and I'll just turn the saturation folder off. And you can see that increasing the saturation has brought in a few artifacts. So there's a few things we can do here. We can either, if you bring down the saturation, it's going to bring down the overall saturation. So what I might do, I'll just keep this up higher 
because I like what it's done, what it's doing to the guy. So, and what we're going to use, we're going to use this mask here, like we used before with the edge details. We're just going to, what I might do, I'll fill this all in black to mask out all the saturation. Now I'm going to grab a white brush, and I'm just going to brush in the layer uh, over the over the guy. So we bring back the saturation and make it just visible over, over the guy. So there we go. Now, next let's go inside the cell shader folder. I'm just going to turn the edge details on and off. So again, I'm going to brush in these details manually. So I'll fill the, uh, the layer mask in black. Grab a white brush and I can begin to just brush in some details. Okay, I think that'll do. It looks pretty good. So let's go ahead down the layer order here. Now another layer I forgot to talk about was the base design uh, and how you can you can how you can use the opacity of this layer to uh, create some different looks. So if I just turn this layer off, you can see that the all the edge details are overlapped on top of the original photo. So that's another cool effect you can create with this action. And if I turn this one on, you can just lower the opacity down to reveal some of the original photo. So you might notice that with some photos, um, having the opacity of the base design layer around 50% looks really cool. Others it might just look awesome at 100% or off altogether. You might just like the way that uh, the edge details sort of wrap around certain elements of your photo. But in this case, we are going to leave it 100%. And I'm gonna go inside the adjustments folder and change a few things here. So let's have a look at a bit of contrast. Leave that off. We'll turn the vignette on. Let's go inside the color options. Try some of these. Number three looks pretty cool. Might actually turn the vignette off. Better without it. Okay, so we're all done. And we'll just collapse these folders and Let's compare what we have against the original photo. So that's all there is to it. Uh, very simple to use and you can come up with some really cool results. So good luck and just contact me if you need any assistance with it. Thanks.